Amen, amen. All right, here in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 4 is what I want to focus on. I want to begin reading in verse number 4. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Now I'm going to get to the subject of the sermon in just a moment, but I want to make a couple of, uh, of preliminary remarks before I actually get into the topic. If you look at our window lettering here, it says Valiant Baptist Church, and then it gives a description of what type of church we are. And it says that we are independent, and then it says this, we are fundamental. Now, in layman's terms, what that means that we are fundamental is that we are serious about our faith. We believe, of course, the fundamentals of the faith, but we are not only fundamental in our belief, we are fundamental in our practice. That's what we believe should be the proper Christian life. Christians today have become extremely liberal. The majority of Christianity, if you look around, it's a joke. It's not true, real Christianity, and they don't take their Christian life seriously. What I'm going to be presenting to you today is a doctrine that's taught. It's a common vein that can be found all throughout the Old Testament. And today, Christians, number one, they're not even interested in following the laws of the Lord. What they will normally tell you is, hey, we're under grace, bro. Hey, this is the new covenant. You know, I'm not worried about all of that. You know, I'm, you know, I'm under grace in the new Testament. Yeah, I understand as far as salvation, and we've always been saved this way, but as far as salvation, of course... It is by grace through faith. But that does, not, that does not give you just this carte blanche where you just do whatever you want. You live whatever type of life that you want to live. Yeah, you'll go to heaven. You're going to go to heaven. But that doesn't make... Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You won't live a disobedient life. God's going to chastise you. Yes, you'll still go to heaven. You'll lose rewards. But hey, if you love Jesus, keep his commandments, right? We're not here to play around. We're here. We, we establish this, this church. Why? Because we want to do something real and big and living for God. Something real, right? Well, here's the thing. Work has to be done for that. Work has to be done for that. The title of the sermon this evening is Memorizing the Law of God. Now, you may have heard sermons on memorizing the Bible in general, but I'm going to show you that there is a doctrine taught throughout the Old Testament. This is a common teaching, a common thread or a vein that you'll find all throughout the Old Testament from multiple writers under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost that as a Christian, you are commanded to memorize the law of the Lord. I want you to look at that here while we're in Deuteronomy 6. And this is actually going to be the text for the evening. Of course, we'll be comparing Scripture with Scripture and going numerous other places, but we will ultimately come back to our main text here in Deuteronomy 6. So we have there in verse number 4 the famous, famous passage, of course, that, that uh, um, uh, proclaims the, that there is only one true God. Monotheism. Look at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Now he's going to give them the recipe for this. Now keep in mind that Jesus said this is the greatest of all commandments. But following this, he's going to give them the recipe or wisdom or, or counsel on how they can do this. Love the Lord their God with all their heart, mind. You know, it says strength in the New Testament. Look at what it says right here, verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Now I'm going to show you, if you're not already familiar with this, what that means when it says that it will be in your heart means that you have memorized it. That's what that's referring to. It shall be in your heart, saying you need to memorize these things. Keep reading. And it's further proof by this context. Let's look at this. Verse number 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Watch what it says next. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now, would it be possible, especially at that time, 
They didn't have access. Not every person had a personal Bible that they kept with them. Now, if they had not memorized God's word or had God's word in their heart, would it be possible for them to teach them unto their children when that lies down, when they're walking by the way, you know, when they're <laughs> laying down, when they're rising up? Would that be possible for them? So what is it telling them? That they need to be memorizing the law of the Lord. Look further. Look at verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. Excuse me. And then it says this. And they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers and so forth and so forth. So I want you to notice the, how he's telling them. I want you to be teaching this to your children. At what? What does he say? At all times of the day. No matter if you're doing this, no matter if you're doing that. Now, would that be possible if you didn't have God's word memorized in your heart? It wouldn't be, would it? Now, I want to begin quickly. We're going to look at two, two New Testament scriptures just so that we stay balanced here. Because it's good to memorize all the Bible. I want you to look at two New Testament scriptures with me. Go to Colossians 3.16. And in these verses, it teaches that we should just be memorizing the Bible in general. But there is a specific emphasis on memorizing the law of the Lord. 95% of the commandments and upwards, uh, there's, it's, it's for sure 95 and up at least, at the very least. That's the minimum. Of the verses that are in the Bible that are commanding you to memorize the Bible are commanding you to memorize the law of the Lord. I'm going to show you that. Look at Colossians 3.16, the first, which is commandments on memorizing God's word in general, Christ's word. Look at Colossians 3.16. It says this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord, in your heart, hearts to the Lord. I want you to go with me to 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 15. 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 15. Notice that it says to dwell in your heart, saying it's staying in your heart. You're keeping it there, right? Look at 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 15. It says this, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. What that means? To, what does that mean? To set it apart. It's so again, it's referencing keeping it in your heart. And then it says this, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Notice it said at any time. You need to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you. At all times, what does that mean? You need to memorize the Bible, don't you? You need to have the Word of God memorized to be prepared to be given. Now, do you think that it's, it's, that it's wise to just give them your own opinion? Or do you think you should be, when someone asks you a question, that you should quote the Word of God? What has power, your words or God's words? Of course, God's words. We need to be memorizing God's words and answering with God's words, right? So we need to be setting God's word apart in our hearts. We need to be setting God's word in our heart. I want to look at a few Old Testament scriptures uh, quickly. Go to Job chapter number 22, verse number 22, that just in general exhort you to memorize the law of the Lord. Job chapter number 22, verse number 22. Directly in front of the book of Psalms. So this is Job chapter number 22. And again, verse number 22. It says this. We may have one of this twice. Job chapter number 22, verse number 22. It says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. And then look at what it says next. And lay up his words in thine heart. What does it mean to lay them up? It's saying put them there permanently. That's the point. Lay them up. What do you do when you lay something up? It's saying that you're going to set it there and he wants you to keep it there permanently. It's teaching you need to memorize God's word, but specifically what? You need to be memorizing the law of the Lord. Go to Psalms, the book of Psalms. We're going to go to Psalm 1, actually. Psalm chapter number 1. Look at verse number 1. Psalm chapter number 1, verse number 1. Psalm chapter number 1, verse number 1. In the very beginning, it says this. Blessed is the man... That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But pay attention to verse number two. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. What is it saying this person does? He meditates or thinks about the law of the Lord day and night. What are they doing? They're memorizing the word of God. I want you to go to Psalm chapter number 37. Psalm chapter number 37. 
Psalm chapter number 37. Look at some of these exhortations quickly. Psalm chapter number 37. Look at verse number 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. So it says the law of his God is where? It's in his heart. He memorized the word of God. Go to Psalm chapter number 119, verse 15. Psalm chapter number 119, verse 15. Verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Stay in Psalm chapter number 119 and go to verse number 97. Go to verse number 97. It says this. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Now I want you to look with me in the book of Proverbs. Go to Proverbs chapter number 3. Proverbs chapter number 3, verse number 3. Proverbs chapter number 3. And once you look at verse number 3, it says this. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Now I want you to go to um, Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 21. Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 21. Look at the context of the book of Proverbs. He's always, every time, he's talking about, uh, he's speaking to unto his son, and he's telling him specifically to memorize the law of the Lord over and over again. Look at Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 21. He says this, Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. Look at verse 20, the verse right before it. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Now, what did Deuteronomy chapter number 6 tell you? That the, the father... And the, the, the parents should be teaching their children the law of the Lord. So what law are they teaching them? They're teaching them the law of God from Deuteronomy chapter 6 is where that commandment was given to them, right? And then it says this, bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. What's the point? It's the same type of phrase that's talked about where it says to lay it up in your heart. To set it in your heart, right? To set it apart in your heart like it talks about. To have it in your heart. What does it mean? It needs to be permanently with you. You need to have God's word uh, memorized. You need to have it with you at all times. Look at the last one we're going to look at before we get into some of the uh, uh, some of the more doctrinal points in the sermon. Go to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter number 22, verse number 17. Proverbs chapter number 22, verse number 17 says this. Bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. So notice you're keeping them within you. What does it mean again? It's very, it's very plain. It's very simple. It's teaching you to memorize the word of God. All right, now I want you to go back to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. And I said it's going to be our main text for the evening. And I'm going to show you a couple of reasons of, of benefits of memorization. And specifically the benefits of the advantages of memorizing the law of the Lord. Memorizing the law of the Lord. So go to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Now as I said, it's very, we can see the, the significance of memorization when we look at the passage where the greatest commandment, Jesus, God himself tells us where the greatest commandment is and what it is, and it's right here in Deuteronomy 6. The following advice that's given to you in order for you to keep the greatest commandment of God is memorize the word of God. So if you say, hey, I want to be obedient to God. I want to keep God's commandments. I want to live an obedient life to my father God. You know what you need to do? Memorize God's word. Don't you think that he would have the best advice? Don't you think that he would know the best way and how you are going to follow his commandments? You know the best way? Memorize the word of God. If you want to keep God's commandments, the very first thing you should do is memorize the word of God. Memorize the law of the Lord specifically. So right here in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 4, I want to focus on that one more time. So it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And then it says this in verse number 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Then he goes on to explain, since it's in your heart, you can teach it to your children while you're walking by the way, when you're sitting down, when you lay down, when you rise up, right? Because you have it memorized. I want to compare this 
It's a parallel in Deuteronomy 11. Go over, this is also reiterated in Deuteronomy chapter number 11, verse number 18. It says this. It's worded in a different way, but it says this. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now in verse number 18... <clears throat> There were obviously uh, the Pharisees later on, you know, which are just modern Judaism of today. It's just a bunch of just stinking Pharisees, basically the entire religion, right? And they have totally misunderstood this verse because this verse is not telling you to literally put, you know, something like the a, a bound upon your forehead. They're not. He's not telling you to literally have a sign that's that's hanging on your hand. They completely misunderstand what it's trying to tell you. And it's in the very beginning of the verse. And when you compare Scripture with Scripture, you look over there at Deuteronomy 6, and you look here at Deuteronomy 11, it's plain as day what he's telling you. Look one more time. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul. What's he telling you to do? Memorize God's word, isn't he? Memorize the law of the Lord. And he says, and bind them for a sign upon your hand. So... Think about this. If you have them memorized and in your heart, why would you need them as a sign upon your hand in the first place? If you already have it with you. It's just another way. Now, if we look in the book of Proverbs, those verses that we just read a minute ago where it says, Hey, keep the law of your father and forget not the law of your mother. Bind it upon thy neck. Is he saying, really, bind the law of the Lord upon his neck? Is that what he's saying? He says... And let it be as, as, a, a, as a necklace, I believe it used, like around your neck in one place, right? Is he saying, literally, go get a necklace, and I want you to take the entire law, and they do this in their posts, don't they? they, they, they they'll get like uh, at least the Ten Commandments. I don't know what they have in that thing, but they get this little rolled up piece of paper. What's it called? Does anybody remember? Yeah, somebody said it one day, yeah. What is it? Mezuzah, I think. Mezuzah. Mezuzah. That's a mezuzah when you see those. So they take it and they put it in their posts. They put it in their posts. But guess what? It's not in their heart, is it? They totally misunderstand the word of God. But what he's really telling them is, hey, keep it with you at all times. Have it memorized with you and in your heart so that you're able to teach it to your children. So you're able to do this. You're able to do that. He's not literally saying, have it as frontlets between your eyes. Like it should be right here. No, he's saying you have it in your heart so you can. It's like as if you have it right in front of your face. And at any time you can read it if you need to. That's the point. You have it like it's on your hand. So at any time if you needed to, you can look down and read it. You know where it really is written? It should be written in your heart. You should have memorized the law of the Lord. If you want to keep God's commandments, you know what you need to do? My number one piece of advice is the piece of white advice that God gives. Memorize the law of the Lord. Just trust the Lord that that is the method on how you're going to keep God's commandments. So we see the, the, the parallel here back and forth. I want you to go back now to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. And this is where we're going to spend the majority of our time. Uh, the first point is, as I've said a few times now already, first benefit or advantage of memorizing the law of the Lord is that there will be According to God, that there will be, if you have a willing heart, of course, to memorize the, the law of the Lord, there will be obedience as an outcome. If you have God's word in your heart, that is going to be a result of memorizing the law of the Lord. You are going to practice it. So we see that in Deuteronomy chapter number 6. I want you to keep your hand here. I want you to go to Psalm chapter number 119. Back where we were before, we're going to see uh, quite a few mentions in Psalm chapter number 119 of memorizing the law of the Lord. And especially in uh, the book of Psalms in general, but especially Psalm 119. So here's Psalm 119, look at verse number 9. Psalm 119, I want you to look at verse number 9. Psalm 119, verse number 9 says this, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee, Oh, let me not wander from thy, from thy commandments. Now watch this. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now the author of Psalm 119, of course it's under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, but the holy man that God used to write these words down, what was the way in which he thought 
that was going to that what was going to keep him from or keep him from saying and keeping the law of God. What was it? What did he say he needed to do? Memorizing the law of the Lord. Keeping it in his heart. He said, I memorized the, the word of God. He says, the, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The whole purpose why he memorized the law of the Lord was so that he wouldn't sin against the Lord. So this is going to be your number one tool in which not falling into the snare of the devil. So that you can keep the law of the Lord. We read this earlier, but I'm going to read it one more time. Job chapter number 22, verse number 22 says this. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. So notice that that is the result of memorizing the law of the Lord. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. I'm going to slide a bulletin here in my Bible, Deuteronomy chapter number 6. As I said, this is the text that we're going to be continually coming back to. The other reason, of course, too, and this is the main purpose of memorizing the law of the Lord, is so that you have continual access to God's Word. At the time when the Bible was written down initially, and the law of the Lord was written down initially, we, they did not, everyone did not have access to God's word, did they? As far as they, they couldn't go and have their own Bible physically in front of their face where they could read it. Now, there may have been a few other people that were able to get copies of it. You can go to their house. I don't know exactly how this worked. I know there were copies that were around. We know the Ethiopian eunuch had one like that. And then all the synagogues started getting them by the time that Jesus uh, you know, had come to this earth, right? But everyone did not have access. So the, the, the major benefit of memorizing the law of the Lord is so that you have continual access to God's Word. So you're able to continually give an answer to someone, right? Well, if you notice here, one of the major things why God wants you to memorize the law of the Lord, of course it's so that you will, as a result, keep His commandments, but also it's not only that. It's so that you can teach it to your children. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Look at verse number 6. It says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So that's all he says about you right there. They shall be, to memorize it. He says, they shall be in thy heart. Then he says this, and he goes on and on. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Notice the emphasis. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So notice the emphasis on the fact that he wants you to be talking about it, and he wants you to be teaching it continually to your children. This is one of the reasons why parents, parents need to be memorizing the law of the Lord. You know why? So that you can at all times, whether you're laying down, whether you're rising up in the morning, whether you're walking by the way, you know what you need to be doing? Teaching your children the law of the Lord. Not just God's word. There's commandments to be teaching the law of the Lord. There's a special emphasis on teaching the law of the Lord. Now our lives, of course, there's so much more. There's doctrine and things like that. But as far as what we put into practice is God's word, of God's word is his law daily, isn't it? When we look in the book of Proverbs and you see in the book of Proverbs of, of advice that is given to a son, you know what the advice is constantly? It's advice on how to live your life by the law of God. When you make decisions daily, do you know what all of your decisions are based on? The law of the Lord. Daily. Everything you're doing, you're basically making virtually all of your decisions. They should be, at least, based on the law of the Lord. Now, who in here has had your child, you know, that's gotten to the age of five, six, seven years old, just randomly, because they're raised in church and you talk about the Bible at home in the first place, just ask you a question about the law of the Lord? Tons of times, haven't you? Now, don't you want to be able to have an answer for your child? Don't you want to be able to supply your child and provide an answer? To your child. Well, that's the whole reason why God says, memorize my word, memorize the law of the Lord so that you're able to teach them that. Now, here's the thing in the first place. You know, you're, the conversations that you have at your home, just like this, you should be diligently teaching them. You should be proactive. They're going to be asking you questions, but you need to be proactive in the first place. And by and large, the, the conversations that we should be having with our children should be Focus around the law of the Lord. We should be talking about God's word in general, of course, but we should be teaching our children the law of the Lord. 
so that when they grow up, they know how to live their lives. They know what decisions they should make. When they're sent out on their own, our sons and, of course, our daughters will get married and then move in with their husbands. But when they leave our home so that they know the decisions that they can make when they grow up. You only have a little bit of time while your children are in the home with you. And then they're gone. And then they're given away to some other man, or they go out on their own and they're going to marry another woman, right? They're going to marry, you know, uh, uh, another woman. That sounds strange the way I worded that, but they're going to marry a woman, right? So in, the, in, this, uh, in this case, I mean, you have, what, you know, 18 years in our situations today, sometimes 20, maybe 21. That's, how, that's the amount of time that you have to influence your children with the law of the Lord. Obviously, of course, you have conversations with them later, but it's totally different when they're not under your, under your home, they're not under your authority. You're not going to have the same influence once that point is gone. You know what? The, the, greater, the younger they are, the greater impact that you have at that age. They're much more influential, and you're able to teach them more while they're young. Parents need to be taking advantage of these things. When you're walking by the way, you know, when you're going to sleep at night, you need to be proactively finding areas where you can teach your children God's Word. You need to be teaching them the law of the Lord. You need to be looking for times and things where you can tie in and teach them, Hey, hey, I had this happen. This happened to me today. Let me tell you what I did in this situation, and then let me explain to you from the Word of God why. But do you know what you need to do in order to do that? You need to have the Word of God. You need to have the law of the Lord in your heart, or you're not going to be capable of doing that. I want you to look now with me at, uh, let's go to, let's go back over to, uh, let's go back over to the book of Psalms. Let's look at Psalm chapter number 119. Psalm chapter number 119. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says this, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. So I have you turning to Psalm 119. Go to verse number 61. Psalm 119 is verse 61. Psalm 119, verse number 61 says this. The bands of the wicked have robbed me. And then he says this. But I have not forgotten thy law. What's the opposite of forgetting something? Memorizing something. Keeping something. Keeping it in your heart. So what is he saying all throughout the book of Psalms? When he says, lay it up in your heart, he's saying, memorize the word of God. I want you to go, this is going to be my last point, go to Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8. Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8. The blessings of God's law. The blessings of keeping God's law, specifically. Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8. When I say keeping God's law, this is, of course, memorizing it. Because as a result of memorizing it, you will keep the law of the Lord as in practice it in your daily life. Look at Joshua chapter number 1, verse number 8. It says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then... Thou shalt have good success. Now, I want you to notice that Moses, when he gave the law of the Lord, what did he tell them? Memorize the law of God. He said, hide it in your heart. When Joshua takes over, now you have a new ruler, don't you? Now Joshua's the leader. Immediately, we have Joshua chapter number one. And what does he say? He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate, meditate therein. Day and night. What's the advice he gives them immediately? He tells all the children of Israel, hey, don't stop talking about the law of the Lord. You need to be meditating in it day and night. You need to be hiding it in your heart. And then he tells them as a result of that, if you, if you, met, if you memorize the word of God, you keep it in your mouth, you keep it in your heart, you're talking about it, what's going to happen? You'll be able to keep the law of God, as in practice it, and then you'll have good success. Then you will prosper in your life. The law of God is, it's not only that we should be keep, keeping it morally because God said so, but it's also practical. If a person keeps the laws of God, that will uh, inherently lead them into success or lead them into a prosperous life. 
I want you to go to, I want to make one more point that is outside of this somewhat, but go to Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Of course, we have a big emphasis on soul winning at our church. We go, we have three soul winning times a week. People go sometimes outside of those, those particular uh, soul winning times, just individually. And I want, to, uh, I want to make a point about the importance of memorizing God's word for the purpose of soul winning, of giving the gospel to others. Look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Verse number 11 says this, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. And then it says in verse 14, But the word is very nigh thee. Saying that means it's near it says, in thy mouth and in thy heart, now watch the next words, that thou mayest do it. So what's the result of it again? Memorizing God's word will cause you to keep the word of God. But we see, notice the, the commandment, it says that the word is very nigh thee, and in thy mouth and in thy heart. Now I want you to keep this verse in mind. It's actually quoted in the book of Romans. I want you to go to Romans chapter number 10. It's applied to the Old Covenant in the Old Testament Scriptures, but here we're going to see it applied to the New Covenant, applied to the Gospel. Look at uh, Romans chapter number 10. And this is quoted. It's interesting. How there it's the Old Covenant here it's speaking of the, the New Covenant. Look at Romans chapter number 10, verse number 8. It says this, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith. Which we preach. So he quotes it, and it's, he's quoting from the Old Testament, it's talking about the law of God, but here he's talking about the word of faith, he's talking about the gospel. He says in verse 9, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you keep all of this in mind, everything that I was explaining about memorizing the law of the Lord and having it with you, that is the benefit and the purpose, of course, of memorizing. God's word and memorizing the law so that you can have it with you at all times. That's why someone would do that. Is I don't always have access to the word of God. You know, I may not be able to just open up my Bible, so I want to have it in my heart. I want to have it in my mind at all times, right? Well, the same thing goes for the gospel. You need to have the gospel with you at all times. I want you to look at verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, do you think, are you, you know, uh, uh, crazy enough to believe that every apostle and every disciple that was sent forth to preach the gospel had their own Bible that they were carrying under their arm? Just, do, do you guys really believe that? Now that I said you'd be crazy to believe that, nobody's going to say that, right? But not a chance. You see people all the time going to, you know, uh, 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 to get access to the Word of God all throughout the world. There's a reason why they all went to the synagogue and then Jesus, Jesus stood up to read. You know, when Jesus is quoting scriptures, he's not opening his Bible. I'm not saying that maybe they didn't have one collectively. I'm sure that they had Bibles in groups. But not every single disciple had the Word of God. Not a chance. Not every apostle had the Word of God. When they started these churches, not every single person in each church had the Word of God. But they were all taught how to go out and go preach the gospel, weren't they? So you know what they had to do when they went and preached the gospel? Memorize the Word of God. They had to have the gospel memorized. Now, who's given the gospel before without having the Bible with them? Plenty of times, right? You are going to have to give the gospel. If you are active and, and, and want to give the gospel to people and you have a desire to get people saved, you are going to be giving the gospel in your life many times without your Bible. If you are looking for opportunities, if you're out there hunting for souls and you're pumping gas and you see some guy over here and he just looks right for the picking, right? You know? And you decide to give him the gospel, and then you're like, oh, crap, I don't have my Bible. Guess I just can't share with him the message of salvation. I mean, what do you think you should, you, you, what, what should be the resolution there? You should have already had God's word hidden in your heart. Now, let me say this. 
If you are a soul winner, if you have been a Christian for one year to two years, you should have the gospel memorized. Memorization is its not as difficult as people think. It's not, you know, in the very beginning of memorization, it can be very hard. I understand that, but there's this, there's this brick wall, and everyone that's memorized understands exactly what I'm talking about, that after one to two months, you break down that brick wall, and it's just the same thing. It's the same game going forward from that point forward. And it's not that hard, and it's not that difficult at all. You, you know what it is? You know why it's so difficult for Americans today? Because it's a part of your brain you're never using. That's why. You know the people in America used to be, literally, they would have, when they were in elementary school, they, were had, they had to memorize, like, the Constitution and memorize the Bill of Rights. You know, look up, like, the elementary school curriculums, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago in, in the United States of America. They had to memorize documents. Did anyone have, was anyone required to memorize things when they were in school, really? Hardly anything. If I memorized something, it was maybe like, a, like literally like a, worth like four pieces of paper the entire time I was in school. Would everybody agree that to about something like that? Hardly at all, right? Hardly anything at all, if anything at all. Was, there, was anybody in here right now that, that would say, I don't remember ever having to memorize something while I was in school? Everybody at least memorized something, right? Yeah, you know, what would you say is the average? We'll take a uh, consensus here. If you were to just say text on a piece of paper like this, average. Couple sentences. Couple sentences. I mean, that's ridiculous, isn't it? The God is commanding you to memorize the law of the Lord. That's that's a lot of text. A lot of you know why it's so difficult for Americans and why that's so daunting. Oh my gosh, you memorized that much of the Bible? Because, they're, because they memorize a couple sentences at a, at, at a time, maybe yearly, at their school. You know, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And hey, if memorization is hard for you, then you know what you need to do? Start memorizing tomorrow. You need to get to it immediately. And let me say this. If you are a soul winner, and if you go soul winning and you do not have the gospel memorized, what you should be memorizing tomorrow morning is the gospel. You need to start... Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, and start memorizing the Bible. That's what you need to do. People need to stop you know, having this Christianity that it's not serious. You know, Just treating Christianity like it's not that big of a deal. You need to have real Christianity in your life. Do you want to keep the law of God sincerely and really? Do you? Well, then memorize the law of the Lord. Do you really want to get people saved? Do you really believe that there's a burning hell of fire and brimstone in the core of the earth. Do you believe that? Then you know what you need to do? You need to memorize God's word. You need to memorize the gospel so you can save people. Isn't that worth it? Oh, that's too hard. You want to memorize like 20 verses to save someone's soul from eternal torment? Goodness sakes. I remember right when I started memorizing the Bible how hard it was. But you know, about two months and that was over. So you know what? You need to get over it. If you have been soul winning for years and years and you don't have the gospel memorized, you're a lousy soul winner. You are a lousy soul winner. Yeah. You are. I don't care if that hurts your feelings or not. If you don't have the gospel memorized, and if, if, if you've been soul winning for two to three years, you're a lousy soul winner. What are you doing when, with all these other opportunities to get people saved? You know what? If it offends you, well, you know what? That's good. That's good if that offends you. You know what that tells me? You know That tells me that you know that you should be doing it. That's what that tells me. That tells me that you know that what you're doing is not right. Then memorize the law of God. Memorize the gospel. Save some souls from an eternal torment. Why won't you? I mean, what, what else are you doing with your day instead of memorizing the law of God? you got a lot of other important things. I just can't memorize the gospel. I just can't memorize Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23, and Romans 6.23. I'm just entirely too busy with my schedule. That's ridiculous. Maybe God's word needs a little bit be a, be a little bit more important to you. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, think about that verse where it's saying, hey, it's not in heaven that you can say, go and say, here it is. You know where it should be? It should be in your heart. If we could take in one of the Old Testament Israelites that was memorizing the law of the Lord at that time, he'd probably make every single person in here look like a lazy fool is what he'd do. 
He probably, if I brought up one of those Old Testament Israelites that actually practiced and memorized the law of the Lord, and I said, hey, quote the law of God, how do you think he'd make you feel? People that were memorizing text and text and text, just page after page after page after page of the law of the Lord. You know how he'd make you feel? Like a lazy Christian. That's how he'd make you feel. Right. Me too, I'm sure. The least you could do is memorize the gospel. Why don't you start there? Memorize the gospel and be prepared to give the gospel to someone. Be prepared that the next person that you bump into, you can, you can share the gospel with them. You can at least deliver this soul from hell. At the very least. So you have God's word in your heart. A couple other things is, number one, you know, one thing that helps you when you memorize, I'm going to give you a couple of just small benefits real quick to memorizing God's Word. It makes you, it helps you to become more familiar with God, with the language of the Bible. Because it can be the King James Bible can be a little bit tiny different, right? It's not exactly the way that we speak today. So it can be a tiny bit different. So you know what memorizing did for me when I started memorizing God's Word? It helped me to become more familiar with that language. It became more routine. When you repeat it over and over and over again, I became more comfortable in just allowing it to roll off of my tongue. That makes perfect sense, right? I remember when I was memorizing God's Word, I just became more comfortable with that. I remember right when I started reading the Bible, you know, it's kind of difficult, you know, to read uh, the King James Bible because it's a little bit different in the way in which we speak today. So that was one thing. Number two, it just helps you to grow in wisdom. You learn more about the Bible that way, right? You, you're gonna, when you're memorizing the law of the Lord, when you're memorizing the Bible, you're meditating on what you're saying over and over again. And God's word is so deep, you're going to continually be learning the things you learn. You know, uh, the doctrine of Jesus being the everlasting father. You know the way that I set myself down that path? was I had memorized the book of, I wanted to memorize the pastoral epistles. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. I did so, and I memorized the last book right when I got to faithful word. I memorized the very last one, and then I had forgotten it for a while. So I thought, hey, I'm going to go back and memorize all three of those books again. Started with 1 Timothy. I got to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. And I noticed, you know, blessed and only potentate who is the king of kings and lord of lords. And then it says, it tells you, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, who no man hath seen nor can see. And I'm like, what in the world? And I remember I brought that up to Brother Rick. When Brother Rick started, that's what set me down that path. I had never noticed that before. I had never noticed that it says, whom no man hath seen nor can see. And I was like, what in the world? You know, that's confusing. What do you mean that no one has ever seen Jesus? Everybody's seen Jesus. That sounds like somebody, doesn't it? That was my thought. Right? Everybody's seen Jesus. That's what I was thinking. And you know what it did? I learned all, you know how much wisdom I've grown in that area from there? You know what that came from? Memorizing the Bible. Memorize the Bible. Think of just how that doctrine, just that doctrine alone has changed your life. Think about that for a minute. You know where, boy, and, and, and I don't want to say that it all came just like, it, it sounded like it all just came from me, but of course there was many people discussing this and we learned more and more. But the beginning of that, in a way, was me just memorizing the Word of God and noticing, who no man has seen nor can see? I'm like, what in the world? And I thought about that for days and days and days. Brother Rick and I would, would go and talk the Bible. This is before Brother Elliot came and started manipulating everybody. <laughs> but Brother Rick and I would talk the Bible. I remember I'd been thinking about it for like five days. And we, we, you know, we got together that weekend and I was talking to him about it. And then from there, just like, we started learning more doctrine and more doctrine and learning more things on top of more things. All of that came from memorization. All of it. I had already had the book of 1 Timothy memorized for an extremely long time before that. For, for literally, probably, I had it for a year and a half memorized. I had forgotten it verbatim, word for word, and then I went back and started memorizing it again. I got to chapter number 6. This is years. So don't tell me you can't learn from memorization. Because I not only had read the book of 1 Timothy probably over a hundred times, but on top of that, I had it memorized and quoted it daily for like a year. And then forgot it. And then started memorizing it again, and then noticed that. That shows you the depth of God's Word. You can just read it, and there's just so much knowledge there you're going over. How much more could you learn from the Bible? Could you learn from the law of the Lord if you started memorizing God's Word today? Think about that for a minute. How much more is there? You know what? That's, the shovel is like memorization. 
It's all there. It's deep. You just need to get that shovel out. You need to start memorizing God's Word. You need to start memorizing the law of the Lord. Specifically, of course, we see that there is a doctrine. We should be memorizing all of God's Word. Memorize the gospel first. That's what saves souls from hell. But you know what? There is a doctrine that's taught all throughout the Bible. What I preached was, that's Bible, my friend. We should be memorizing the law of the Lord. Everyone should be memorizing the commandments of God. You know why? Because we need to take our Christianity seriously. We need to be keeping God's word. We need to be daily wanting to be a better Christian and to be obedient to God's law. You know what the number one advice that God gives you is? Put my word in your heart. God says, put my word in your heart, and that will cause you to keep the commandments of God. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, for, for uh, giving us your word in the first place.